Do you read food labels now? Are you confused by all the claims on the food packaging? Do you pick up a box or package of food and wonder, is this really healthy for me? Hey there, I'm Sherry Johnson. I'm a certified holistic health and life coach and I own Empowered Health Coaching. So let's figure out how you can easily and quickly decipher food labels, determine if the food is really healthy for you and how to select the healthiest foods. So how to easily and quickly decipher food labels. Boxes and packages are a marketing strategy to make you pick up that food item and buy it. The manufacturer will make all kinds of claims to get you to throw it into your cart. Stop. Don't believe the claims. Let's get label savvy. Here are some common claims and what they actually mean. Healthy, per the FDA website, their latest criteria are based on certain amounts for an added sugar limit sodium limit and saturated fat limit for grains, dairy, vegetables, fruit products, some proteins, and some oils. So processed white sugar, white table salt, and white flour are all considered healthy. More to come on that later. Natural. The product originally started with something natural like bananas or spinach. The FDA has not formally defined natural. More on that to come too. Gluten-free. It just means there's no wheat, spelt, rye, or barley. The food can still be highly processed and unhealthy. On their website, the FDA defines gluten-free as 20 parts per million of gluten or less. Even with this small amount of gluten, people with celiac may have a reaction. Some may be very extreme. Some foods are marked as gluten-free that would never have gluten in them anyway, unless the manufacturer added it. Fruit flavored may actually not even have fruit in it at all. It may be artificially flavored with chemicals. Multigrain just means it contains more than one type of grain, probably refined grains made with whole grains. Some of the most sugary children's cereals are made with whole grains. And if a whole grain isn't at the top three in the list, there may be very little actual whole grains in the product. Fortified or enriched. It just means they added some vitamins or nutrients to the product. This doesn't necessarily make it healthier. Light are processed foods reduced in calories or fat, possibly watered down, sugar also may be increased. Low fat, the fat may be reduced, but the sugar and salt may be increased. Low carb, this is a buzzword and the product may be highly processed. No sugar added, unhealthy chemical sugar substitutes like the pink, the blue, or the yellow packets, you know, Sweet and Low, which is saccharin, NutraSweet, which is aspartame, or Splenda, which is sucralose, may have been added. Some foods also may be naturally high in sugar. Organic. So verify what's organic. Sugar and seed oils can also be organic. No fat. No fat means they had to flavor it somehow. There may be more sugar, and or salt added to that. So take a look at that. Zero trans fat, that allows for 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving. There is still trans fat, and if they make smaller servings, then you may actually eat more. So do your detective work to decipher their claims and look at their ingredients. So let's take a closer look at what natural means per the FDA according to their website. Although the FDA has not engaged in rulemaking to establish a formal definition for the term natural, we do have a longstanding policy concerning the use of natural and human food labeling. The FDA has considered the term natural to mean that nothing artificial or, or synthetic, including all color additives, 
regardless of source, has been included in or has been added to a food that would not normally be expected to be in uh, that food. However, this policy was not intended to address food production methods such as the use of pesticides, nor did it explicitly address food processing or manufacturing methods such as thermal technologies, pasteurization, or irradiation. The FDA also does not consider whether the term natural should describe any nutritional or other health benefit. Do know that the FDA also allows food products with ingredients produced with genetic engineering or GMO and high fructose corn syrup in natural foods. So don't be fooled, natural means nothing. Is the food really healthy? Per the FDA's website, this is their new chart on how they define healthy. The chart's title, Proposed Criteria for Certain Food Groups and Sample group, uh, Foods. I will link to my blog so you can see all the FDA charts and also go to the links I used for my video and the blog. On the chart, it shows grains and dairy can have 2.5 grams of added sugar per serving. This is equivalent to over half a teaspoon. Let's look at a couple of uh, food examples. So if we look at three quarter cup Dan and low fat yogurt, it has 13 grams of carbohydrates which is the equivalent to over three teaspoons of sugar. That's a lot of sugar, but considered healthy for the FDA since it isn't added sugar. If we look at Barilla spaghetti noodles, which are made with wheat, a serving size per their box is two ounces uh, and has the equivalent of 42 grams of carbohydrates. So Barilla does not have added sugar, but the carbs listed on the box per serving is the equivalent of 10 and a half teaspoons of sugar. Would you ever add 10 and a half teaspoons of sugar to a single serving of anything? If you will, please don't let me know. But the FDA says for grains, you should only eat three quarter ounce of whole grains. Will you only eat three quarters of an ounce of spaghetti? Probably not. The sugar equivalent of the three quarter ounce of spaghetti is still 16.8 grams, which is a little over four teaspoons of sugar. It's still a lot of sugar, but it's considered healthy for the FDA. The FDA put a limit of 230 milligrams of salt on each food group, but didn't specify what type of salt. White table salt, like the one with the little umbrella girl, you know, Morton, should not be eaten. If you are still eating it, please switch over to sea salt or Himalayan salt for your best health. The FDA put a limit on saturated fats, which is at 5% on all groups with dairy at 10%. They never specified what types of saturated fats. Saturated fats have actually been villainized. Saturated fats can include milk, cheese, butter, meats such as pork, beef, lamb, and poultry also coconut and palm oil. As you can see, they're mainly found in animal uh, proteins as well as tropical oils. There are healthy versions of those saturated fats. If you eat organic grass-fed, grass-finished, pasture-raised, free-range, humanely raised, antibiotic, and hormone-free, then these are great sources of fat. Look for those on your label. Organic coconut or organic palm oil are also healthy sources of fat in moderation. Vegetable and seed oils are really the oils you should be concerned about. They are not healthy at all. How to select the healthiest foods. As you've seen, the health claims labeling on boxes and packaging can be misleading and are, they're really more for marketing purposes. Here are some guidelines that I use to select healthier foods. So number one, food products with one ingredient don't need a label. This would be ideal, such as an apple. Number two, if there is more than one ingredient, then five or less ingredients are best. Number three, do you know what all the ingredients are and can you pronounce them? Number four, 
natural or artificial colors or flavors. Put it back on the shelf. Number five, vegetable or seed oils, which are corn, soy, cottonseed, safflower, canola, peanut. Put it back on the shelf. Number six, artificial sweeteners, sucralose, aspartame or saccharin, and high fructose corn syrup. Put it back on the shelf. BHA, BHT, MSG, sodium nitrates, sodium nitrites. Goes back on the shelf. Known GMO foods. Back to the shelf. I'll link to my uh, blog and video on GMO uh, bioengineered foods in the description so you can learn a little bit more about those. Number nine, the ingredients show on the list in the quantity order from most to least on how much is in the product. Look for added sugar. I have found at least 126 names for sugar now. In order for sugar to not show up in the first few ingredients, manufacturers will use multiple types of sugar. So notice, I haven't looked at the nutrition facts yet. Ingredients are more important. Often, if the food is not healthy, it is back on the shelf before I look at nutrition facts. Number 10, if there is a food label and I have gotten past the above criteria, then I will look at the nutrition facts to see how many carbohydrate grams and how many added sugar grams the food has and compare it to the ingredients to see where they are coming from. If there are a lot, then the food is put back on the shelf. Number 11, another trick that the manufacturers may use is to change the serving size to smaller so it doesn't look like there is as much sugar or other unhealthy ingredients in the product. If it's a small package, then someone also may assume it is single serving and not two or more servings, and then they'll eat the whole package. I know this doesn't cover all the unhealthy ingredients, but it's a great start manufacturers want to sell their foods and they will do everything they can to get you to buy it, even if it's misleading. Save this video to refer to later and please share it with somebody you love. I know there was a lot of information. It does get easier to decipher their marketing jargon and determine if the food is really healthy. Bottom line, is avoid processed foods and opt to eat more real whole foods. They're your best choice for better health. So know what you're eating. It really does matter to your health. If you have some more tips and tricks you use, please put them in the comments below. We can all learn from each other. Was this helpful? Do you feel like you can make better choices when reading food labels now? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.